Hi, this is Martin Drummond with uh, Progressive News. Thursday, March 21st, 2019. Uh, basically, the FARC have just been completely trodden on in Colombia. Uh, the FARC have given up all of their weapons and uh, become a political party and completely legalized themselves and in exchange what did they get back? Over 2,000 of them murdered through like a uh, death squad uh, routine that's just designed to eliminate them or eliminate their leadership and what I would equate this to is um, like a guy who he uh, hates his neighbor okay the Colombian uh, president I call him Doogie or Dookie because I think he's a piece of shit he's a piece of Dookie <laughs> I think that's what you call a piece of shit. And uh, I see him as being like a guy who he looks over the fence into Venezuela and uh, he wants to hurt the, the dog in the backyard of that uh, uh, neighbor's backyard, but he can't get to him. Because he would have to start a war with Venezuela, basically, to do it. And he's probably not real sure whether he could win a war like that unless the United States uh, actually uh, came in with truth. So, what does he do? He just kicks his own dog. You know, I mean, this is the mentality. This is the lack of intelligence that these leaders have. And it, it's a wonder... They say no one was killed, but I don't believe it because now listen to the gunfire. Yeah, I, I'm not buying it. Somebody had to die. All the good ones die. That was John Lennon. So, they've been fucking with the campesinos, the farmers, the typical peasants, the mostly more or less Native American, uh, you know, South American uh, indigenous for the last month or two. The indigenous have been protesting, having peaceful protests, and uh, you know, there's another group that isn't willing to lay down its arms, and I'm betting this, a lot of this is them, right? They're just tired of this shit. And what gets me, this is the real reason why I decided to make this video, is um... Unless you watch my show, or whoever this is, uh, Telesur, or somebody like us, you're not you're not ever going to know any of this because the United States and the right wing control the media in Colombia and what gets out, and certainly the media in the United States, and they don't care. You know, the American media doesn't care how many people die in Colombia. They don't care if the right-wing government is murdering FARC or campesinos. They, they don't want Americans to know. Just like they didn't want Americans to know that in Nicaragua and in the Venezuela, the right-wing are just fucking obnoxious, really, is what it comes down to. 
uh, you know, when they take to the streets, they murder people, and they uh, rob all the stores, uh, and riot, and, and vandalize, and and intimidate and, and thugs, their thugs attack uh, anybody that they don't like. Whereas if you watch a pro-government, a pro-Maduro or back in the day Chavez rally, those people don't do anything to anybody. And in fact, uh, during the Nicaraguan thing, the Sandinista president refused to even allow the police to leave their police stations because he was afraid how it would look and these asshole right wingers burn cops in their police stations I mean this was a really ridiculous thing that and how you know right wing America really shame on you shame on you the right wing uh, people whether they're Democrat or Republicans shame on you you're, you're pathetic losers is what you are. You have no right to be part of any government anywhere. Uh, you know, you're hurting millions of people. And I really, uh, I won't miss you in the least when you're gone. That you could condone, or even worse, support financially covertly the uh, the right wing and, and the capitalists basically in uh, Venezuela or the same kind of thing in Nicaragua you shame on you shame on you you are horrible awful people and you're guilty of murder because you're you're conspiring with those two groups in those two countries and I'm sure you conspire in any country like that Cuba uh, Haiti wherever there's people trying to get out from under your boot you're conspiring with those governments to commit murder you're you're just as guilty as they are it's just like if I paid somebody to kill somebody and and then you wonder why I believe you deserve I mean I believe that you should be tried and executed because it's mass murder I mean you're talking about mass murder genocide quite often and that's what you're trying to do you know you did it in Iraq uh, you were trying to do it in Afghanistan I mean, in Afghanistan, the only thing stopping from you from wasting all these people is the Taliban are uh, just a little bit too much for you. <laughs> and I, no kudos out to the Taliban, because I know they're religious fundies, and religious fundies, whether it's the Taliban or evangelical Christians, you're all a bunch of fucking lunatics and guilty of so many crimes. I mean, I just can't even... But you know, for some reason, uh, well, I say you get away with it, but you'll get yours. You'll get yours. Uh, I happen to know for sure that uh, balance is woven into the fabric of the universe. And that includes my world. And that includes America, right here where I'm sitting the walls, the land outside, the sky, the, the universe. Balance is woven in. And that means karma. That means, I don't know, godlike revenge of some kind takes place. No matter what anybody does, no matter how anybody tries to manipulate it or play with it, you can't change it. That's why I don't go after people you know people screw me people they threw me in jail as far as I'm concerned they kidnapped me and held me hostage do I go after them no you know why because I don't trust myself to be able to actually 
dispense justice. And because I so firmly believe that justice is woven, real justice, not the kind like what they did to me, was not justice at all, it's the opposite, it's injustice. But I believe it's woven into the fabric of the universe, and I believe that, like it says in the Bible, and I'm not a Christian, and I'm not a Jew, and I'm not a Muslim, so I can't say that, you know, I believe it because it's in the Bible. I believe it because it, it rings true to me. And that's the vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so I leave vengeance to what I consider, what I call a God. And if you want to know what that is, well, you can easily go find it. Um, I have two, two groups. One is called the House of Jesus. And the other one is called Oops. The Philosopher's Stone. And in either one, uh, you can go. So this one, there you go if you want to find it, or you can just do a search just like I did. And you go to uh, files, and you'll find, because my religion, or my religious ideas are all based in, you know, reality. So you can, so in science, you know, so I have different kinds of views of the universe, and I, I think that I'm, I mean, I think Einstein was an amateur compared to me. I think my understanding of the universe is more intuitive and more reality-based and well not more well-founded. Uh, I think I have a connection. Because one of the things that I believe that I've explained to you already in this video just a few minutes ago is that... Uh, well, did I explain this? I explained to you that balance is woven into the universe. Well, I believe that balance is a characteristic of God. And I believe that... Uh, now, I don't know that I believe this, but I think that the whole material universe, which I believe is infinite, is made out of God. I think that if there was ever a creator, it was God creating the universe all at once as infinite in time and space in every way, which is a, oh, I forget what you call it. I mean, it makes no sense to a human being, but we're limited to our capacity as a human being to understand this stuff. So let's say that the universe in all its infiniteness uh, has always been here and always will, and that God created it out of himself. So he made whatever he is into our universe and made it and because it's made out of him, it has all of his character not his, it's God isn't it, uh, characteristics as we are all it, whether we're limited by our sexuality or not, whether we're he or she. Okay, so then I can say that the material universe that we live in has all the characteristics of God, including freedom, which allows us to kill each other and be evil and all that other stuff. Okay, for all those people out there who are going to say, oh, well, why, are, why do bad things happen to good people? But then again, if God's characteristics are part of it, Bad things happening to good people aren't a bad thing. They're just uh, perceived as bad. You know, you go through pain, you perceive it as bad. But I think once you get beyond the pain, 
you're able to see all kinds of things. And when you're dead, I think you become completely aware of all the uh, realities of this universe and their nature and everything. And you can understand how your pain and suffering are not really uh, uh, like God being evil or something. So, uh, you know, <laughs> all this to explain exactly how, uh, and, and, you know, you can uh, also go here, the house of Jesus, and that's uh, people who dig Jesus, or you can search for it like I did, I searched for house. and find it and in files you will find uh, well just one thing about is Jesus real is God real <laughs> interesting choice of songs huh? this one's all about the Kennedy assassination and earlier uh, the song I we listened to uh, look at his face was af about John Lennon about good people having bad things happen to him so go back to this so so you know um, I do believe they'll get their own in the end. They'll get what's coming up to them. Their comeuppance, comeuppance, whatever it is. But in the meantime, of course, we have to watch it all. So, you know, Duque can't kick people around over in uh, Venezuela like he'd like to so he just gets mad and fucks with his own people Hay una cantidad de acuerdos de hace más de 15 años que los diferentes gobiernos han venido fir eh, firmando acuerdos que tienen que ver con el tema de tierras, con educación con salud, con vivienda, con vías de comunicación y que el gobierno no ha cumplido. Okay, not as quite as many as uh, as I thought, but still, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty horrid. If 426 union leaders in the United States were assassinated by Trump since 2016 we you know if it was your mother or father <laughs> so you see I mean and the United States makes all this happen. I mean, we completely fund the uh, narco syndicate president and government of Colombia. And if you watch, like, the movie, like, uh, oh, I forget what it was called, uh, Solidano or something, uh, the, one of, the one with uh, Benicio del Torres and... Uh, Josh Brolin, two of my favorite actors. You get a kind of an idea of what's going on there because it makes a lot of sense what they do, what they talk about in the movies. And we do support narco terrorism. Um, and Americans don't understand that. I 
I mean, a perfect example would be the fact that uh, the FARC were never in the drug business until they decided they wanted to try to take it away from the right wing people who actually controlled it. You know, all the Medellin cartel and everything, they were all supported by the United States, who is the real drug smuggler. Rich Americans are the real people who smuggle drugs in the United States. That's why no matter how much money we throw at the drug problem, it never goes away. Because all they do is they take that money away from us and they use it to wipe out their competitors. Tell us it was awesome, right? And I'm sure that uh, narco tra trafficking would probably or be related to the Kennedy assassination in some way. Or we find out that the Cubans, the right wing Cubans, were involved. It's it's all tied together in the end. Anyway, this is Martin Drummond with Progressive News. Hope you learned something. Hope you got something out of what I had to say. Uh, you know, I wish somebody else was able to, you know, well, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great stuff, and that's where I get a lot of my inspiration, you know, the Glenn Greenwalds and the... Democracy Now and uh, Mike Figueredo and uh, Kyle Kalinske and, and all of them, all of them, Rational National, all you guys, you uh, you inspire me. But uh, I think I have a, I think I have some things to say. I think I just said some of them. So, uh, I think I'll let the song go out and, uh, that'll be it for today in this segment. Thanks for listening. That was my first try at slide guitar. No, maybe my second, but I think it was the first one I kept.